But today I'm going to talk to you about this issue. A turnaround God means a turnaround year. A turnaround God in a turnaround year. Thank God that he can turn the situation around. Amen. How many faced issues this year, this past year, you thought you wouldn't get out of? You felt they were insurmountable, right? But God said, no, I'm going to turn the situation around for your good. Amen. Right? Amen. Thank God for his mercy. Amen. So, this is what we're going to talk about today. The turnaround God. How many need a turnaround? Amen. Amen. Zephaniah, if you will. Zephaniah chapter 3. Verses 17 through 20. Zephaniah chapter 3. The Lord thy God. Can you turn this up a little bit? <clears throat> the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is what? Mighty. Mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. And he will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with what? Somebody says, do y'all like singing? There's going to be a lot of it in heaven, y'all. If you don't like it, get used to it. Amen. Right? Amen. I will gather them that are the sorrowful for the solemn assembly. You are the solemn assembly. Who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold. At the time I will undo all that afflict thee. Let me repeat that. You like that? Amen. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee. Amen. If you have a storm, a battle, a crisis, whatever the case may be, come and afflict you, guess what? He's going to undo it. And I will save her that halted, and gather her that was driven out. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring to you again, even in the time that I gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all people of earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask that you anoint these lips of clay as I attempt to give this word that I believe you have given for this people for this season. Father, and let it change our lives forever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In the beginning, God entered into the darkness and he displayed his turnaround nature. That's what he does, right? He spoke words that turned darkness into light and filled the emptiness with what? Fruitfulness. Right? Amen. Everything came in. His power brought order into chaos. Right? Amen. So if he did it at the beginning, what means, why do you not believe or think that he cannot do it in your crisis? Right. Or in your situation? Right. Our creator God turned the dust of the earth into birth, breathtaking what? Birds, air, uh, beasts, the field, the, the atmosphere, everything. He turned Adam's rib into a helpmate. Right? Yes. Eve. God revealed himself as humanity's turnaround God. Right? And ever since that moment, the enemy has sought to turn back what God has destined to turn around. Specifically for you. For your life. From his first approach in the garden to Adam and Eve, what took place? The enemy came in to manipulate and try to reverse God's turnaround nature. Did he not? Yes. yes. Why? Because that's his job. John 10.10 10 tells us the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy what God came to heal. What he came to bring into fruition. Right? But God's turnaround power came in the form of his son. Did it not? Amen. Yes. It did. It came in the form of his son. Jesus. 
who demonstrated once and for all no death, no curse, no enemy, no phallus, nothing can stop his turnaround nature. Nothing can hold back God's power from resonating into your existence and in your life and in your crisis. Right? The cross of Christ became the turning point for all of humanity to receive a Savior. Christ took every bondage, every sickness, every sin, everything that could plague you. He took it and he paid the price to turn it around. Right? He experienced death in order to attain life and freedom for you and me. God gave us the gift of a Savior who would reside with us forever, right? He took us from lost humanity and gave us the choice to turn to Him, Amen. right? And receive eternal life. We are now the custodians of that same turnaround power. You possess it the moment that you receive salvation. Amen. His power resonates within you the moment you receive salvation. Did you know that? Because the Bible says, Jerry, that we are joint heirs with Christ. Amen. Right? So if I'm an heir to him, that means everything that he holds is mine. Amen. Right? right? Amen. So the same power that he came back, first he said, I'm going away to receive power. Right? Amen. Then you read on a little bit farther and he says, behold, I have all power. And then you read on a little bit farther, Jerry, in the Paulinian epistles. And he says, Behold, I give you power. Amen. So that same power that he went to get, he received, he manifested, and he gave it to you. Amen. Right? Amen. That's good stuff. Is it not? Yes. Hmm. As God's people, his spirit rests with you and me. Within us. Amen. We are commissioned to work with him to turn our world upside down. Right? For one purpose. And that's to call men to Christ. To speak into the darkness and bring forth his light. Remember when Paul was on the Damascus road. What he said. He said, get up. I, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. What purpose was that, Paul? To call men unto darkness into the marvelous light. Amen. That's what he called him for, right? And he's commissioned us for that same purpose, right? Why? We've been given the authority to turn around injustice with his justice and hopelessness into hope because of his hope, right? Yet often we allow our, our doubts, our disbeliefs, our questions, we allow it to question this power and let our fears contain us from receiving the freedom. Every, all the time, right? We cannot allow our circumstances to compromise what Christ paid for. That's right. That's right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right? We cannot allow our circumstances to compromise what's already been paid for. The highest price was to obtain it. We must awaken within our hearts and stir up in our faith and begin to look again at the places God has positioned us in. Not to look around and look where it may be bleak or the situation may not look good. But God says, behold, I've given you all power to stand, to withstand, to sustain. We need to see with new eyes the possibility of our turnaround God and what he can create in the places where no one else can see that potential. Amen. Right? One, you're looking at it. You're in a church, right? Amen. People. People's like water. It comes and it goes, right? But God's word and God's plan and God's house will always stand. Amen. Period, right? This is good stuff, I'm telling you. We must seek to be the ones who bring answers where others only see problems. Amen. That was deep. That was Bible theology 101 right there, right? We need to shake off the complacency that can so quickly enter into our hearts because it can and it does, right? It causes us to settle for less than His Word promises us to receive. Amen. You ever been there? Amen. You ever been there? Where you compromise to settle for less than what God has already granted for you? That's right. Right? There is so much more for your life to embrace. Not just settle for the mundane, but so many breakthroughs for you to play a part in in your life. 
Right? But you can't have a breakthrough without a breakout. Right? right? It's time for us to break out of the shell, break out of the circumstance, break out of the thought, break out of the fear, break out. Why? Because God said, I'm calling you into a place. I can't be your turnaround God if you're still standing in the quagmire. Amen. Right? I can't be the turnaround God of your circumstance if you keep turning around and looking back at the circumstance. Right? Because... The Bible says uh, that he lifted me up, he set my feet upon a solid rock, and he established my goings. If he's done that, why do we keep stepping back in the same pit? That's right. Right? Hmm. We need a greater revelation of whose we are. Whose we are. And in that understanding, we can grow greater confidence of what he has called you and me to do. Right? I'm tired of just being in the mundane. Uh, how about you? Just, well, wait a minute. We're coming into church today. Uh, we're going to sit in the pew. They're going to sing three or four songs. He's going to take up an offering. They're going to sing another song. And then he's going to get up and talk for 45 minutes. Right? I don't want that. Do you want that? No. I want to know that the power that resides within the words and the message and the song that comes alive is not just something of a melodious sound that we do, but no, I love that when they sing, they know what they're singing about. I love knowing that those words come alive within the heart and in the spirit. Why? Because not for a minute have I been forgotten. Amen. Right? We, that song they sung about today, right? Not for one minute have I know. I know for a fact that you didn't forget me. I may have forgotten you. I may have forgotten what you can do, but you have never forgotten me. And you still showed up in that right early just because your word, your promise tells me that you will turn it around for my good. No matter what I face, no matter what they say, no matter what the situation looks like, God said, I'll turn it around. Right? That's good stuff. Yep. A supernatural turnaround is a divine encounter. Yep. I don't know about you, but if I'm going to have an encounter, I want it to be supernatural. Yes. Mm -hmm. God reverses my circumstance, turns around the negative into positive, and shifts my thoughts and life into a new direction and brings a season of change into fruition. Amen. Right? Amen. How do you know that's true? Because you're not in the place you were. So he did change it for my good. Right? Amen. What do you think is a hurt? What you think is something devastating? God turns into a God appointment. Yeah. When you see things through the supernatural. Right? Mm -hmm. Don't just always look through the natural. Because it's hopeless. Yes. We have hurts. We have pains. Right? right. We do. Yesterday. The last two days. Yesterday specifically, it was blowing cold. The wind was strong. It was cold out there. We were down in this hole with water everywhere. And you'd go out there to the main out there to turn the water on and off. You know how it's a well-looking thing, Cass? Well, since this ground is flat, guess where all that water goes? And it was filled up about that, that far down, right? You had to reach down there. I had never felt water so cold in my life. I stuck my hand down there. Some of you yesterday seen that. My hands were purple. Purple, they were so cold. But you know what? God said, I'll turn it around, right? Yes, yes. We could have complained about that. And I could have said, I ain't doing it. I'll call somebody. I'll, we'll just put church off another week. We could have did that. But I wouldn't want to do that, would you? No. no. So we persevered and God said, you know what? For your trouble, guess what's going to happen? There's people going to show up tomorrow morning with an expectancy yeah. that I'm going to turn it around. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's what it's all about. God works things through His will, not our will. Amen. Right? How does God turn good things out of big messes? Look in the mirror. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Right? God turns it around because I know what I'm capable of. I can mess it up. When I mess it up, I'm going to mess it up right. Right? right? I just ain't going to half-heartedly mess it up. I say, you know what? If I'm going to mess it up, I'm going to mess it up wholeheartedly. Right? That's what we all have done. 
How does God turn these things? Literally, what happens is a supernatural turnaround of season that you start leaning into a new direction. It's not overnight. It's instantaneously. Right? You lean in this direction that you wouldn't have if it were up to you. If it were up to you, some of you, and not all of you, but some people, if it were up to you, you would have probably rolled over under your comforter this morning and said, it's blistery cold out today. It's 15 degrees with a wind chill of 10 below. Burn. Right? Let's just turn over on the pillow. No, but there was a perseverance. Why? Because something down on the inside, that innate, supernatural, spontaneous, combustible reaction within your spirit says, no, I've got to get to where a supernatural event can take place within my life. I've got to be in His presence because my presence is hopelessness, but His presence is nothing but hope. I've got to get to where He can turn it around. It's worth getting out and getting in, right? Amen. Yes. A supernatural turnaround of season is when God steps into my world and changes things around. It's when he steps into my world and turns it upside down. Right? That is a supernatural breakthrough. Hmm. Think about that. The footprint of God is so big that when he steps in, everything else has to move. Amen. Right? Amen. The footprint of God is when he steps in to make his plan, his will, any hindrance, any obstacle that is in opposition to him has to flee, has to move and get out of the way. Because he says, I am God and I am God alone and I'm stepping into your circumstance. Now, are you willing to say whatever course I've been on, send the storm. Right? Then the, your little sails on your sailboat of life to pass forward, catapult you. Right? Spit me out. Turn me around. Are you ready for the vision and the dreams that you've had to come into fruition? Amen. A lot of us, we want God to move, but we kind of settle back because we're afraid of what he's going to step us into. A lot of people step back and they don't move because... They're the unforeseen of what God will do. Uh, I like being in my comfort zone. I just want to settle here. And God goes, Ooh, but then. Right? Mm. And then he blasts his nostrils and your little sailboat of life skis forward. Right? You ever had God push you forward? Oh, yeah. A little bit uncomfortable. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy pill to swallow. Right? Sometimes you got to do things, say things, act on things that you don't want to do. Right? But guess what? They don't come without a cost. It comes with pits. It comes with prisons. It comes with violent storms. It comes with opposition. Right? But let me tell you something. If there's an opposition coming against you, that means God is trying to push you. Because there's always going to be that opposition. Right? It's been from the beginning. So when the opposition comes, that's a good, your little red light should go off. And in law enforcement, we call that a clue. Okay? It ought to be a clue. God is up to something. Amen. Because the opposition is fearful. Right? It's coming in violently. That means God is up to something. Mm. That means I need to pay attention. Right? Why? God brought Joseph into an unexpected place, did he not? Can you use non-Christians to be part of your destiny? Yes. Can God use the world yes. to bring you into your destiny? Yes. Can He use 
people that to come against you? Yes. yes, he can. Why? When God moves into my world, God steps between me and the situation. God will fight the battle. Otherwise, if we're not in the realm of the supernatural, we tend to fight our own battles. Right. And I have come to learn that if I take a step back, God, you do your thing. Yeah. Right? You keep your mouth shut. You let God do what he does. Right? Why? God's got your back. He's got your battle. He's coming between you and the opposition. And not only that, he also comes <laughs> suddenly. Amen. Amen. That's a good thing. The thing about suddenly is that you can't get ready for it. Right? I like that. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, when the church was born on the day of Pentecost, they were in one place, in one mind, in one accord, right? Yeah. I like that next part. You know what it says? And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. It wasn't the joker sitting next to me. It wasn't the person in the pew next to me. It came straight from the throne room of God. I like that, Jerry, because it says, and suddenly Amen. there came a sound from heaven yes. that filled the house Amen. where they were sitting. Amen. I don't know about you, but here at GBC, my prayer is this. God, send us a suddenly here at GBC and fill this house up with your glory, with your power, and your anointing. Right? There's nothing you can do to make it happen. It's suddenly. It just happens. There are times when God puts together something that you could never have ever put together on your own. We can have programs here at the church. We can spend six months preparing for an event, but that's pale in comparison to what God can do in a second. Right? Suddenly, there are times when God puts together something that is miraculous, and all of a sudden you think, God... This ain't exactly what I prayed for, but it is ten times better. You ever experienced that? Amen. God interrupts circumstances. Uh -huh. wow. Amen. God interrupts circumstances. Mm. Let that marinate. All right? Divine interruption sometimes causes carnal responses. Let me repeat that. Divine interruption sometimes causes carnal responses. Sometimes we focus on how much we work for something to happen when we get interrupted. Divine interruption prepares us for... <laughs> Are you listening to this? Divine interruption prepares us for divine provision. Amen. Mm, yeah. Say, Pastor, I'm awake now. <laughs> what we hold on to is not as good as what we're going to get. Amen. Mm. All right. Amen. God interrupts for a reason. Yes. What we need to do is let it go. Quit trying to hold on to it. Yes. Let it go. Amen. Right? You ever seen those people that the only thing they want to do is cause you chaos? Yeah. Amen. Because they're holding on to something that they just can't get out of their system for whatever reason. Yeah. Right? Maybe if they got saved, it'd be all right. Let's pray. Right? Yes. Pray. 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 Why? Because we need to let it go. Whatever the hindrance is, you have to let it go. Amen. Right? Why? Because it's interrupted for a reason yep. and a purpose. All promises in Christ, every promise in this book is yes. Amen. Amen. Everything from that leather to that leather is yes and amen. amen. Every promise is yes and amen. 
every blessing, yes and amen. Every event that's been destined and chartered for my life is yes and amen. It doesn't matter who comes in, doesn't matter who goes out, doesn't matter what the enemy brings, uh, because the promise upon my life uh, is yes and amen. Yes. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. It said, forget about what happened. I'll tell you what it says. It says this. Forget about what happened. Don't keep going over old history. Amen. Amen. Truth. Amen. Never stop. That's for effect. Did you get it? Yes. <laughs> Quit going over old history. Be alert. Be present. He's saying, I'm about to do something brand new in your life. Amen. That means it's busting out. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? That's basically what it says. There it is. I'm making a road through the desert, rivers in the badlands. A turnaround attitude on your part is important. Don't sit there and look at the quagmire of the circumstance. Know that I'm about to make the turnaround in your life. Amen. Right? A turnaround attitude is important. You ever seen those people that it didn't matter what you did, didn't matter what you said? They got a bad attitude? Yeah. Sometimes they sit there on the front row. Mm -hmm. None of y'all. <laughs> Sometimes they sit in the back row. Sometimes they sit in the middle. Right? Why? And you can always tell. You ever seen it? <laughs> Bless me. Bless me if you can. <laughs> I shall not be moved. <laughs> right? I say, you know what? Fine, you sit there, don't be moved. Let the rest of us have an old time turnaround experience uh, and let's have church and revival from the house of God. Right? Because here it is. I'm not going to, I don't mean this in a bad way. I don't. This, I don't mean this ugly. I'm just telling you how it is, right? Most of you know I'm a straight laced person. I'll tell you exactly how it is. You want to know what I think? Ask me. I'll tell you, right? <coughs> I'm not going to let you stop me from my turnaround experience. Amen. Right? So you can sit there like you kissed the frog and look like that if you want to. Because tell me, hey, huh, y'all ain't getting no pranks. You're just kissing a frog. That's all there is to it. If you want to look like that, that's your prerogative. But you know what? I thank God for the turnaround experience. I thank God for the opportunity. So I don't have time to look like you and look like I puckered up to old green face, right? No, I don't have time for that. Why? Because every experience is brand new. God said I'm doing something new for you. Every blessing, every morning is a new experience. I'm not going to hold on to yesterday and the quagmire of its defeat. I'm stepping into a new experience and hope in God. Right? An attitude defined who you are. Right? It's not an emotion or a thought. It's connected to your perspective. Mm -hmm. Right? With the right perspective, you can have the right attitude. Right? My daddy told me one time, I needed an attitude check. Can you believe that? Yeah. Yeah, does. Absolutely. I'll pray for y'all. <laughs> he did. He told me one time I needed an attitude check. Well, probably more than once. <laughs> but I needed an attitude check. And you know what? Daddy was never... <laughs> y'all, this is my sermon. <laughs> Get your own. <laughs> But Daddy was always uh, on time, never late, to offer me an attitude check. Right? Never. You, this is what he followed it up with. He said, Michael, I'll remember these words all my life. He said, your attitude will determine your altitude. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's what he told me. I didn't always listen to it. I mean, everybody's got to go through things and learn on their own, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to learn the hard way, right? right yeah. But it does define, your attitude defines your circumstance. Mm -hmm. It defines you, right? Believe it or not, when I was a youngster, a teenager, I may have been mouthy. I may have been. May or may not. Oh, you were. <laughs> you would know. Of all the services she comes to, it's this one. <laughs> all right? I may have been. Okay, I was. I, I was about to. But then all of a sudden, Daddy was this. He was that. Remember that? Yeah. Right? Now, did he do that because he hated me? No. Did he do that because he liked to do it? No. He did it. <laughs> we need to rewind this a little bit. Edit that out. <laughs> he did it for my turnaround. Right? Because he said, you're headed down a road you ain't not going to like traveling. Yes. Right? He says it's going to bring you heartache, it's going to bring you problems, and you're not going to like the road you're going down. So I'm trying to steer you in a turnaround to where you won't have to experience it. Right? He did it for my good. Right? Because he loved me. He cared about me. He didn't want me going down certain events that would cause me destruction and heartache and pain. And he didn't want to see that. Because you as parents, you want what's best for your kid. Right? What about the Heavenly Father? How much more does He love you? Because that love that you have for your kid is pale in comparison to His love for you. Because we have a love that is a natural love. It's an, it's an attraction of the flesh love. Right? But there's another one called an agape love that reaches beyond your fault and it sees your need. Right? That's love beyond what we can even comprehend. When I took psychology and sociology in school, we learned about all those loves. That agape love, the filio love, the arius love. Some of you know that, right? You go through all that. But there's never a love like his that can be explained. Because I don't know anybody. I mean, my mommy, my daddy, they love me. My sister, she loves me. But I don't know anybody that would die for me. That's right. When I didn't deserve it. Right? What's it say, Jerry? Yet in sin, he still loved us? Right? Why? Because he knew the turnaround that he was about to create in your existence. You weren't always going to be here because I'm the God of the turnaround. Ooh, that's good stuff. Isn't it? Hmm. Amen. Now listen. It's a direct result of seeing things properly. There are things you need to let go that have defined you in the past. Forget what happened. Don't keep going over old history. I told you that. Why? Listen up. As long as you're married to the past, you can't move on to the new thing. That's right. Amen. He said, behold, I'm doing a new thing. But if you're married to the past, you can't grasp what's coming in the future. Amen. Who cares if you don't feel healed yet? Mm. You have been healed. Speak to your emotions. Don't let your emotions dictate you. Emotions are fleeting. Emotions are temporary. How many's ever heard this? I know you shouldn't do this, but I know you have. I hate you. How many's ever heard that? How many's ever had that said to them? Then 10 minutes later, oh, I love you. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Emotions are fleeting. Depends on your mood. Right? But God's provision is not fleeting. It's eternal. Right? Why? Confess that old history is gone and that something new has arrived. 
We were in this building a couple weeks back when Peggy, right there, big Peggy, Peggy interrupted my service. Right? God sends an interruption. I told you he sends in the interruptions. All of a sudden, Peggy stands up. People ain't used to Peggy standing up. When she plants her butt on the pew, it stays there until it's time to leave, right? And now, here's the thing. Why? And I'm not saying that in an ill way. I'm saying it because of the pain. Because it hurt to move. Just let me sit here and I'll be okay. Then all of a sudden, guess what Peggy did? Yes. She interrupted my service. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm doing my preaching thing. All of a sudden, Peggy, out of nowhere, one that you quiet, well, most of the time. <laughs> she yells at me a lot, but generally quiet. She goes like this. And then she lifts her hand. Then she steps out of the pew. Now this is how you know. I'm about to shout right here. You ready? This is how you know God steps into the interruption. Because we're in a Southern Baptist church and we're not supposed to do stuff like that. All of a sudden, Peggy gets out of the pew. All of a sudden, we have a divine interruption. And God says, I don't care about your Southern Baptist theology. All of a sudden, you're going to know that I showed up in the house. And all of a sudden, You know, I understand you get rambunctious from time to time, and you know why I do? It's because of things like that. Because somebody that has, when the least is touched by the greatest, you will know you've been touched. Right? Then all of a sudden, guess what? It doesn't matter if we Southern Baptist. We may eat chicken after service, but right now we got to move. We can't see it because we're looking the wrong way. Don't cling to past events and quit dwelling on them. Because the only thing, you know what happens when you dwell on past events? Everybody else is moving on and you're the one sitting there angry. You're the one sitting there with that quenching spirit, that haughtiness, Right? Yes. When everybody else moves on. Right? You see it all the time in relationships. And it filters down. You wonder why some kids are half nuts? It's because they watch you. <laughs> <laughs> right? You see it in relationships, split families, where a kid goes with one parent, you know, from back and forth, and all of a sudden, one parent is holding on to the past. Right? I think I explained it one time, right? With Shanene and Shaniqua. You remember that? <laughs> you worried about what's going on with Shanene. Shaniqua already moved on. She don't care about Shanene. <laughs> right? Let it go and get the fulfillment of your destiny. Amen. Right? Joseph named his sons, Jerry. He named them. You can read the story of Joseph in Genesis 37 through 50. Right? Guess what happened? Manasseh and Ephraim. He named them. Manasseh means the Lord has caused me to forget. Ephraim means doubly fruitful. This is going to be deep, but I hope you get it. Everyone wants an Ephraim, but you need a Manasseh first. Yes? Because the Lord has to cause you to forget to doubly bless you. Right? 
In Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 and 15, by the time uh, they were in front of Peter's house, upon entering, Jesus found Peter's mother-in-law sick in bed, burning up with an immense fever. He touched her hand and the fever was gone instantly. No sooner she was up on her feet, she was fixing dinner for him. Right? We all face situations that look like they will never change. It's easy to get discouraged and to think that it's never going to work out. That's easy to happen. But God said in Zephaniah in our th chapter 3 in our text, I will turn things around for my people. Amen. He is a supernatural turnaround you, God. Amen. Right? Yeah? Why? He turns barren wombs into beautiful babies. He turns Red Sea experiences into dry pathways. He turned five loaves and two fishes into fish and chips that fed thousands of people. He made it into a banquet. Did he not? What can he do for your life? He turned skin filled with leprosy clear as a baby's face. Most importantly, he takes a sin-stained heart and washes it white as snow. Amen. Right? There's nothing that he cannot do. When thoughts tell you your situation is permanent, you'll never get out of this problem. You'll never get well again. You'll never shout again. You'll never love again. You'll never laugh again. You'll never see your family restored. Now get ready. A turnaround is coming into your existence. God is turning my sickness into hell, my addiction into freedom, my life into abundance, and my struggle into ease, and my hopelessness into hope eternal. Amen. Thank you, Father. Are you with it? You're coming into a turnaround season. You're, blow, you're going to see the hand of God do things that are unusual. Uncommon. Out of the ordinary. Because he's done that with me and you. Right? Because he took something out of nothing. Right? Hmm. This is what Zephaniah said. God has turned my mountains into molehills. Mountains represent obstacles. Things that look permanent like it's immovable. Depression can be a mountain. It may seem like you'll always struggle with it. Right? Addictions may seem like a mountain. Drug addiction. Alcohol addiction. Gambling at hey, you throw whatever you want in there. It's all an obstacle. And it seems like you're always going to struggle with this. A mountain could be, listen, listen, listen. A mountain could be people that are not for you. That's right. That's right. Come on. And rub like grains of sand trying to rob you of your identity. <laughs> yeah, boy. But here's the thing, when they're rubbing you like sand, it's polishing and refining you. Amen. Because that's what sandpaper does. It refinishes. It refines. It, it restores. So now, instead of yelling at this person or whoever it may be, you can turn and say, <laughs> thank you for being part of my turnaround experience. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Yes, this is a new day. That mountain is about to be turned into a molehill. God is flattening some things out. What used to hold you back is not going to limit you anymore. Amen. People that work for you suddenly are out of your path. People that could not walk the same road with you into that existence, they've got to go a different direction. Why? You didn't have to do it. God turned it around. Amen. Right? That's good stuff right there. Amen. Somebody say, preach. preach. I'm trying. Be quiet. <laughs> He can turn that mountain of loneliness, despair, 
destitute, not having anyone to love, into a molehill. Why do you say that, Pastor? Do you know what it's like to sit here not feeling loved, feeling abandoned? Yeah. Uh, mm, you know, everybody gets in that pity party every now and then, right? But here's the thing. Remember in the beginning when I said, Jerry, every promise of this book is yes and amen? Amen. Yeah. I can't be alone and I can't be unloved because he said, I will never leave you or forsake you or leave you standing alone. That means I can't be empty. I can't be alone because the promise is yes and amen. amen. Right? Mm, that's good stuff. That'll preach. Right? The right person is going to come find you. For all you single people. <laughs> <laughs> that had to be Mary. <laughs> for all for all you single people out there, you know what? The right person is going to come find you. A divine connection. Somebody to perfect you better than you could have imagined. Right? I used to worry about that when I was younger. I'll never find this person. All my friends were doing this, that, and the other, right? But there was, uh, I'm going to go way back. This is in the 80s. This is like in the early 80s, mid-80s, somewhere in there. Barbie, you can verify my story. <laughs> back in Mount Carmel on State Route 74, there was a store there. Thrithway was here, right? Remember Becker's? All right, under Becker's was a place called Bebop's. I was forbidden to ever go there. My mommy said she'd kill me if I ever went there. I have to test those limits. You know that, right? All my buddies go there. All my friends go there. So mom and dad went to church on Sunday night was the thing. So I found some way to stay home. And guess where I went? Guess who showed up? <laughs> God. Did you ever wonder those Holy Ghost filled mamas that you know they have a like pipeline to God that you never knew existed? You know? And you can't even sin and enjoy it because you're in fear that you're gonna get caught. I got caught. Mommy and daddy pulled in the lot. Get in the car. I do not want to. Can I walk home? No. Right? And we had a come to Jesus moment. How many's ever had a come to Jesus moment? This, when I say come to Jesus moments, when I see my dad and I see his face and how red it is, because I did exactly what he told me not to do, I have a come to Jesus moment because I'm doing this. Rapture. Now. <laughs> right? I prayed for that. We've all been there. Have we not? Why did I get on that? Oh, the right person coming to you. Right? That, back at that time in the mid-80s, you know, I wanted to be like some people and go to these places. Couldn't do it. So I would one night, I remember all my friends, because I hung up, some of them were over, 17, 18. And they'd go out on dates. They'd do this. And I couldn't go. And I'd whine and cry in my room. And I used to get dressed up in my room and look in the mirror just to see what I'd look like if I went on a date. <laughs> I did, but I couldn't do nothing till after 11, uh, 10 o'clock because from 9 to 10, I watched Miami Vice. <laughs> on Friday night. So if I went out, it was after 10 o'clock, right? So I would do this. I would prepare for this. What's the point of that? Because God has appointed your destiny. Right? Mm, let that sink in a moment. Now, you can, you have to receive this by faith. It won't do you any good if you just say this ain't for me, Pastor Michael. My situation could never turn around. <coughs> then you're going to sit there in it. Right? God will never pick you up by the hair of the head and tell you to do anything. Your, circ <laughs> your circumstance will because your circumstance will pressure you to prayer. Oh, God! You ever prayed that prayer? Always started out, oh, God. 
Oh God, if you will help me in this situation, I'll never be in it again. Until next Friday. Right? You don't know what I'm facing, Pastor. You can cancel out what God wants to do by doubt and negativity. Doubt, fear, and unbelief. Did you know that? You can stop the hand of God with doubt and fear and unbelief. Right? Say yes. 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 Okay, because it's true. I'll point it out to you later if you like. Instead, be a believer and not a doubter. Get in agreement with the word and with the promise. I agree, God, my turnaround is coming. It's coming under my feet, into my health, into my finances, into my relationships, into my career. And guess what? This year is going to be the best year of my life because I'm standing upon the promises. I'm letting go of yesteryear and what it brought me, but I'm stepping into a new season. I'm stepping into a new path that you chartered, you created, and I'm letting it go. Amen. David in Scripture went through a lot of opposition, did he not? Yes, he did. Let's face it, David was a screw up. That's all there is to it. I like him because he reminds me of me. Right? <laughs> What'd you say? I never murdered anybody yet. <laughs> right? But I like it because here it is. The reason I like he's one of my favorite people in the Bible because he comes down to my level. He comes down to life, right? Because we all get it wrong. We all screw it up, right? We all step into things that we shouldn't be stepping into. But God, if you can use him, if you can bless him, if you call him, that gives me hope, Jerry, that he can me too. Amen. That doesn't leave me out because I know I ain't went that far with things, right? But God, if you can anoint him, bless him, and call him from where he was to be a king, That's right. and say, he's the apple of my eye. Yes. Why did he say that? Even all the horrible things that David did, because he knew his heart. Right? Right? We all have actions that we do. But it's the condition of the heart is what matters. Right? Mm, that's good stuff. Right? David in Scripture went through a lot of opposition, lonely nights, and betrayals. King Saul was trying to kill him, Jerry. His baby was sick and didn't make it. He died. There was plenty of things that could have stopped his destiny. But he said in Psalms 30, God, you have turned my mourning into dancing. You turned my sorrow into joy. He could have been bitter, angry, and discouraged looking into the rearview mirror. But he understood we serve a turnaround God. Right? Yes, we may have seasons of mourning. We're going to. Times you go through loss and disappointments and things are not fair. Let me tell you something. I'm going to give you a rude awakening. Especially this snowflake bunch, if you're watching. Despite what you have been indoctrinated to believe that life is a bowl of cherries and you are demanded everything you want at your finger sin. Life is not fair. Right. All right? You are owed nothing. Right? The only hope you have is in a turnaround God. Because morning is coming. Loss is coming. Heartache is coming. Disappointment is coming. Yes. It's a guarantee. Yes. You're going to get hurt. Yes. You're going to bleed. Yes. You're going to get sick. Yes. You're going to get old. And you're going to die. Yes. Right? Yes. Those are things that you know are an absolution. Yes. Right? Yes. 
But the process on the journey is my turnaround experience. Right? What makes it a turnaround experience? Because when these events come in, yes, even though when I'm at the point of death, the turnaround experience is this. I'm going from here to there. That's my turnaround. Right? I'm going from heartache and pain and desperation to hope eternal. Right? He's a turnaround God. Say yes. God is going to take what is meant for harm and turn it into your advantage. Let me repeat that. God is going to take what is meant for your harm and turn it into your advantage. Right? Yes. He's not going to stop all the difficulties. He won't keep you from every mountain. But he did promise he'd never leave or forsake you. Right? He did promise he'd turn that sorrow into joy. He'll turn the mountain into a molehill. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. Right? I love that. But why? Because Greenbush Baptist, child of God, dear friend, I've got a good word for you right now. You may have been at midnight hour. It may be weeping. It may be heartache. It may be whatever the case is oppressing you now. But look up, child of God, because the sun is about to break. It's coming yes, over that mountain. And even though you have been weeping for the night, joy is on its way for your life. Right? Yeah. You have to get your fire back. The disappointments, the loss, what you're up against. Don't let it stop your purpose. God is still in control. He didn't bring this far. He didn't bring you here to leave you here to die. Right? It seems like a setback, but this setback is a setup for a comeback. Right? What are you talking about? The woman with the issue of blood. Hopelessness, death, imminent. But there was a suddenly. Right? Yes. Jarius' daughter, <coughs> lieth at the point of that she died. There came a suddenly. Church people, situations may not look pretty, but there's a suddenly. Right? Zephaniah went on to say, when God turns it around, everything you've lost will be restored. Amen. Instead of shame, it's canceled for honor. The burdens that you carried will be lifted. Verse 19 of our text goes on to say, he will get rid of all those who have made your life miserable. He will heal the sick. He will bring home the prodigal. And you will be respected wherever you go. Amen. Get this down in your spirit. Get it down in your spirit here this morning. It's turnaround time. Everybody say, it's, it's turnaround, turnaround time. time. Why? Because I have a turnaround God. Amen. Right? Amen. This is good stuff. What limited you in the past is not going to limit you anymore. Little Peggy. Big Peggy, little Peggy. I like little Peggy. She's on my level. I can look her in the eye. Other Peggy just sticks her hand out and says, go away. Little Peggy. Big, big example in Greenbush Baptist Church. Little Peggy sit in that corner pew where my sister is right now forever. Mm. Ever since you've been here, probably. Right? It was almost like she was a fixture in the building. Right? Then one night, I remember this plain as day. I was up here preaching. And some of you may know, I had something going on in my abdomen that was killing me. I was in immense pain. It was going on for a month. I didn't tell too many people about it. I went on about my business and stuff like that. And I was up here, and I was in pain, but you wouldn't know. Right? right? Yeah. Peggy, little Peggy, stands up from her little fixtured seat. Yeah. <laughs> Interrupts me again. What's up with you people interrupting me all the time? <laughs> Interrupts my sermon. 
and says, God told me to tell you, it's done. Amen. You're healed. Amen. That reinforces everything I've just said. Because that wasn't in her natural state. And now, look at her today. She's directing your praise team. Amen. Going from the back to, to the pulpit. Because God said, I'm stepping in and I'm turning it around Amen. for your good. Amen. Romans chapter 8, 28. What's it say? All things work together for good to them that love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. Amen. Right? Yes. yes. That's what it says. That's what I'll stand on. Jerry, is it there? That's what it says. That's what it says. That's what it says. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reinforcing it. <laughs> Hallelujah, brother. I like it. It's not going to limit you anymore, people. Guess what? He's going to give you beauty for ashes, praise for your sadness, joy for your pain, as you what? Remember His name. Right? Mourning into dancing, sorrow into joy. What's the last verse of that? Every day will be sweeter than the day before. Right? Amen. Amen. How many agree with that? Amen. <laughs> As I mentioned at the start of this sermonette. <laughs> this, <laughs> this verse that we gave you is special to me. Why? Because God gave it to me at a difficult time in my life. And he did provide and make a way for me as well in honoring and fulfilling his words. It's never, ever, ever failed. I may have failed. But his promise to me has never failed. That's right. right? And he's never failed in fulfilling and honoring his word to me. The scripture in Zephaniah goes on. And it says that he does this so that his people may proclaim my praise. Yes. Right? Because when he turns it around, it's not for you to be all giddy and well. It's that all... Glory is manifested thereby, and all praise goes back to Him. Amen. Right? Amen. Yeah, that's what it says, right? You may be in the right place right now where you can see the mighty waters rising around you. The trials and the difficulties of this life, <coughs> they're perplexing. I'm not going to tell you they're not, because they are. If somebody that told you all this ex Christian experience is going to be a bowl of roses, your life would be perfect, you need to go find them and punch them in the mouth. <laughs> because they lied to you. <laughs> right? What's, many, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But guess what? I read on a little farther, Jerry, and it says that all of this stuff is pale in comparison to the glory that shall be revealed. Amen. Right? Think about that. The trials or difficulties of this life may come against you where they seem like there's no way out. Get that song ready. If that is so, and please remember that God is one who makes a way. May you too today be encouraged and proclaim His praises as you trust Him once again. Bow your heads please.